This is a third of three Socratic, three Socratic demonstration sessions. And the first session focused on questioning students to get at the basic elements of thought. That's the various parts of thought to take thought apart. So in the first session, we focused on questions that deal with the purpose of thought, the main question, information, interpretation of information, basic assumptions, fundamental concepts, implications, and point of view. In the second session, we dealt with a lot of questions dealing with the parts of thought, but with special emphasis on the basic standards for thought, questions that help clarify, that deal with the question of accuracy, that deal with the question of precision and relevance, depth and breadth and logicalness. So those were the questions we focused on there. And in this third session, we're going to bring in two other ways to question. One is based on systems of thought, and the other is based on domains of thought. And let me explain basically what I have in mind by these distinctions, and we'll get them into the background of our thinking here. We can distinguish from the point of view of systems three possibilities. Some questions have their home in one given system of thought in which you have to think in order to get an answer. So, for example, questions of addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division exist within a definite system called arithmetic, the natural number system, and there are definite ways to get the correct answer to these questions by simply using the system to get the answers. Questions in chess about what move you can and cannot make. Questions in surveying, many systems that we have. And what you do is that you use evidence appropriate to the question, reasoning as defined within the system to get a correct answer. And when you get that correct answer, you have knowledge. And I consider these one-system questions. And so if we have a one-system question, if there's a way to get the answer to it, and we have to recognize how to get that answer, and we need to find that answer in order to uh, proceed. But there are other uh, questions that find their home within disciplines that are, have multi-systems that conflict. So various questions in psychology are going to be answered differently dependent upon whether a Freudian, a Jungian, an Adlerian, uh, a Gestalt therapist, a rational emotive therapist, a reality therapist, or what have you, responds. So here we have multiple conflicting systems. We use evidence again, and we use reasoning, but now it is reasoning within uh, multiple systems. And because there are multiple systems and because they conflict, we don't get one correct answer. We get better and worse answers uh, by, by means of the exercise of judgment. So the natural end product of reasoning within conflicting systems is to render a judgment. And the judgment gives us, if it's well done, a good answer, an attractive answer, maybe even the best answer we can come up with at the moment, but we don't properly call it the correct answer. Because other reasonable persons working within these systems can also come up with reasonable answers with a lot of insight behind them. Now, we contrast both of these with what I would call no system questions, and in which we don't consider evidence and reasoning, basically, but we base our answer on subjective preference. 
And this subjective preference um, is what we use to develop what we might call our mere opinion, or our subjective opinion, as against our reasoned judgment. So the contrast here is between reasoned judgment and subjective opinion, based on preference. So let's look at a question of that sort. Which is better, vanilla or chocolate pudding? Uh, which is better, short hair or long hair? Which is better, uh, these blue jeans or dressing in this very different style? Well, for most of those questions, it is a matter of preference. Which is a better place to live, on the seashore, in the mountains, in an urban setting, or out in the country? It's a matter of what you prefer. Now, to put the category two questions, and I'll sort of number them this way so you'll know what I'm talking about, one, two, and three. So when I say category two questions, I'm referring to questions in this category. Category two questions can, in general, be understood in terms of the notion different strokes for different folks. Or another way, looking at it from an ancient Roman point of view, de gustibus non est disputandum. Concerning matters of taste, there, may, there may, may be no dispute. That is, don't dispute them. Don't argue about matters of subjective preference. Different people like different things. There's no accounting for taste. This is, and so forth. And of course, what we mean is subjective preference, not uh, educated opinion, not reasoned opinion, but mere preference. And we need to distinguish a question that is a matter of mere opinion from a question that requires reasoned judgment. And sometimes it's sim simply a matter of changing one word in the question as to which we're asking. So I can say, what music do you prefer? And I can also say, of these two mu uh, forms of music, which is more musically complex from, um, um, from this particular tradition in music, or from a musicological point of view? Then it may be a category one question, because it may be a fact that, that this one is more complex, period. Or it may be that it depends on how you look at it from different theories of music. But in any case, it is not, because of the way I've expressed it, a matter of mere preference. It doesn't matter what you like. You may prefer the less complex or the more complex. That's a subjective reaction on your part. OK, so we need to help students discriminate amongst these. And we need to know when we ask a question, what kind of question are we asking here? Now, there's an important connection between category one and category three. Because you can't answer questions of judgment unless you have knowledge. So now you could discriminate sort of three kinds of people. People of judgment, I mean people of knowledge who know a lot. People who have a lot of subjective opinions, though it isn't based on knowledge. They have a lot of distinct preferences and they like to express them. And people who have good judgment. Now, people who have good judgment always have knowledge because you can't reach judgment without knowledge. But you can have knowledge and not good judgment. So there are some people who know a lot, but they're not good decision makers because they're not good at using their knowledge in the exercise of judgment. In any case, in asking questions, we want to know what kind of question we're asking and we may raise a category three question. For example, what is the most significant medical problem in the country today? And then follow that up with a system one question. Well, what are some of the leading causes of death? You see? So what are some of the leading causes of death? It's a system one question. We can identify leading causes of death. It's a matter of fact. But then which is the most significant health problem is not a matter of fact. It is a matter of judgment. And we have to look at it from different points of view. 
So the, this is the distinction between these three kinds of questions, and one of the things that a good questioner does is know the questions you're asking. You don't ask a question in category two, subjective preference, and ask for a reasoned answer. Because if you ask what do you prefer, for example, what kind of music do you prefer, and you say blues, and I say prove it. <laughs> well, there's nothing to prove. You ask me what I preferred. I don't have to give you any proof. Now, if you said, is blues, um, an, uh, to what extent is this an artistic form of music with, uh, which ranks high amongst other music, then that's another matter. That definitely requires knowledge, and I'm uh, calling for judgment here. So we need to know, and confusing these questions is a problem in a lot of discussions which are led by teachers, because some teachers think all questions go into category two. Okay, that's your opinion. Now this is your opinion. Now this is your opinion. That's the, the end of it. We simply get out all the opinions. But in critical thinking, we do not assume that mere opinion is ultimately what we're after. Because you can have mere opinion and be a person of no knowledge and be prejudiced and be rigid and be unfair and be narrow and be hostile and all kinds of things. You still have opinions. Having opinion is no achievement. Being able to acquire knowledge and exercise judgment, that is something that we're after. So we're trying to help students to see the difference, amongst other things, between what is subjective preference and what is reasoned judgment and what is knowledge. So we ask questions with, with knowledge of the questions we're asking, and we help to lead them in the direction of understanding these distinctions. So that's one thing we're going to take into account. 